I'm your host, Claude, your guide to the uncharted waters of the terrifying, the unexplained, the mystifying. What could be more mystifying than the classic incarnation of evil? Call him Mephistopheles, Beelzebub, Satan, or Devil. By whatever name, he is the human form of the ultimate temptation. It is proverbial to cast evil in the guise of a mysterious stranger with horns and a pointed tail. But if the devil were to take human form today, what might he be? A politician, a salesman, or perhaps something more subtle, even diabolical. Tonight, we explore the possibility of doing real magic. And what would happen if a modern-day Faust were given too much power? I'll be back in a moment with the first act of For My Next Trick. Come join your lung association and discover the facts of life and breath. Learn how air pollution is affecting you and your children and what you can do to breathe easier. That's what the Lung Association is all about. They've almost licked TB. They're battling smoking and other breath robbers. And with your assistance, Lung Associations across the country can help clean the air. Write for free information on how you can help. Your Lung Association brings you this public service message because they care about every breath you take. history, many people have been accused of being in league with the devil. But what is evil? Who creates it? Does it remain the same from generation to generation? Or does it change form, method, indeed character, from one age to the next? A full-time carnival, one of those conglomerations of priests that in the middle of this country's depression would miraculously appear in the small hamlets of mid-America, exhibit its collection of novelties, and then just as suddenly vanish. Hurry, hurry, hurry! Witness Mystic Martin, the magical marvel. See feats of magic never before performed for civilized man. It's all on the inside, and it's all yours for one thin dime, one-tenth of a dollar. Hurry, hurry, hurry! Now, ladies and gentlemen, the greatest magician of modern times, Mystic Martin. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. For my first illusion, I should like to borrow a man's hat. Well, uh, well now, any hat will do. Uh, well, ah, thank you, sir. <laughs> my assistant, Millie, shall fetch it from you. Uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, every magician is supposed to produce a rabbit from a hat. But I intend to produce a rabbit, not from my own hat, but from this hat so kindly donated by the gentleman in the third row. Now, with a few magic words and a wave over the hat, I shall produce a live rabbit. Alakazam, Alakazam, and here we have, uh, uh so somewhere we have, uh, yeah, uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, if, if you'll just have a little bit of patience here, I'll be able to... Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, if you'll just give Mystic Martin a few more moments, I'm sure you'll... That is, he'll be able to... Oh, forget it. What's the matter, Michael? What's the matter? Millie, didn't you see? Well, yes, but... Well, then what are you asking for? That's the third time in two days Chester has stuck his tail out of my coat. But the song A Woman in Half Trick went all right at the last show, didn't it? Sure. But that's only the second time we've gotten it right this week. Somehow, something goes wrong at every show. Michael, it'll get better with practice. Millie, we don't have time to practice. The carnival owner said that unless we get the act together by the weekend, we're fired. But, but what will we do then? I don't know. Magic is the only thing I know, and, and jobs aren't easy to come by these days. Hey, Martin, you've got a visitor. A visitor? Yeah, some fan, I guess. Don't ask me how. Even I don't like your show, and I'm paid to like it. Want to see him? Why not? Right now, I guess I need all the fans I can get. Okay. Hey, mister, the great Martin will see you. Gee, Millie, do you think somebody liked the show? Michael, I don't know. Hello, Michael. Oh, Carl Owen. 
Uh, Millie, it's Carl Owen. Remember? He built the saw woman in half cabinet for us. Of course. How are you, Carl? Fine, Millie. Well, what are you doing in these parts, Carl? I, I thought you stayed pretty much in Los Angeles. I do ordinarily, but Blackstone is opening a new show in Chicago, and I delivered some props to the theater. When I heard you were playing the area, I thought I'd drop in and see what you were doing. Ah, uh, pretty much the same old stuff. Yes, I see. Oh, did you see the last show, Carl? Yes. Ah, oh, well, you should have seen the one last night. We finished that one. Uh, what, what, what I mean, Michael, by the... I'm afraid I know what you mean. No? Yes. Carl, it's really not as bad as... Don't worry, Millie. I'm not here to recall my illusion. But I would like to have a talk with Michael. All right. Uh, I'll set up the next show. Nice to see you, Carl. Nice seeing you, Millie. Well, Michael? You don't need to say it. I know. Michael, when I built the sawing the lady illusion for you, I thought you might have some talent. I thought you might rise above the poor showings you had in Los Angeles. I thought that on the road playing to audiences that hadn't seen a lot of magic, you might make a go of it. But let's face it, Michael, you just don't have what it takes to be a great magician. I'm afraid you aren't even a good one. What you're saying is, I'm not even a bad one, right, Carl? Yes, I guess that's what I mean, Michael. But isn't there any way I could get better? I don't know, Michael. After what I saw today, well, my best advice to you is to try to find some ordinary job and give up the idea of being a magician. Give it up? That's it. Because the only way you could be a good magician is if you could do real magic. Real magic. Real magic. Well, good to see you again, Michael. Say goodbye to Millie for me. Huh? I said, say goodbye to Millie for me. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Hmm? Goodbye, Michael. Real magic. What if I could do real magic? No phony boxes, no screens, just real magic. Just wave my hand and it happens. Blink an eye and it happens. Don't do anything and it happens. Michael! Huh? Has Carl gone? Carl? Oh, yeah, yeah, he's gone, huh? Well, what did he say? He said I should do real magic. Real magic? Well, well think of it, Nellie. I, I could do it anywhere, anytime. Just point a finger and, and, and make anything disappear. Point it again and, and it reappears. Michael, calm down. Nobody would know how I did it. Not even other magicians. Well, I'd be the biggest thing in show business. Michael, please. I'd have the whole world at my feet. Michael! That's it! Real magic. I'd sell my soul to do real magic. Mr. Martin? What? You are Mystic Martin. Oh, well, yes, of course. I thought so. It's a pleasure to meet you. Well, how, how do you do? This is my assistant. Yes, Millicent Hendricks. I know that also. A pleasure. How did you know? Your name. In my business, it's good to know a lot of things about a lot of people, Miss Hendricks. Your business? Yes, Mr. Martin. I'm what you call a talent scout. I search out promising people of all types and recruit them. My God, I, I think I'll go reset the props so you and Mr. Uh... DeVille. Yes, Mr. DeVille can talk alone. A charming girl, Mr. Martin. Yes. Now, what was it you were saying about me? That's what I like, someone who gets right to the point. And so shall I. I overheard you say something about doing real magic. Overheard? From where? An advantageous position. Real magic, Mr. Martin. That's what you said, wasn't it? <laughs> well, yes, but uh, well, that was just wishful excitement. Perhaps. But what if it could be true? Imagine, just for a moment, that it were really possible. Uh, but it isn't. But what if it was? Imagine the power to do anything you wanted, anywhere, anytime. That's what you were thinking about, wasn't it? That's what you'd sell your soul for, isn't it? Well, yes. Uh, but just a minute. Oh, that's impossible. What are you getting at? I want to make you the greatest magician of all time. I want to give you the ability to perform real magic. I want to see your name up in lights on every marquee from east to west. But why? As I said, I recruit talented people for special assignments. I am recruiting you, Mr. Martin. All I need is your signature on this contract. Uh, say, where did that come from? I know a few tricks myself, Mr. Martin. <laughs> Wait a minute. You want to do all of this for me, but what's in it for you? Well, now, that's fairly well known, isn't it? What did you say your name was? Ah, you finally guessed. DeVille. Well, DeVille is what I call myself in this century. In past years, I've been called some harsher-sounding names. Perhaps at the turn of the next century, I'll have changed again to keep modern. 
And that contract? The usual. Your name goes on the bottom line. I make you the world's greatest magician with the power to do real magic. When the time comes, I claim your soul and your mind. Simple. Now, hold on. Not so simple. Now, I'm not sure I, I want to trade in my soul just yet. Well, of course. Not right away. Yeah, well, maybe not ever. Come now, Mr. Martin. A moment ago, you were ready to relinquish everything just to do real magic. I'm offering you even more. Not just the power, but all the things that go with it. Fame, money, excitement. And you don't give up anything now. I just put it on the count, so to speak. Am I crazy? Here I am talking to whatever it is you are and, and actually believing that you're him. <laughs> that you really can do all of that. Ah, but you're not real. I'm, I'm just daydreaming. I must be. Well, then, what have you got to lose? What? If I'm no more than a flight of romantic fantasy, then what can you lose by putting your signature on this contract? If I'm a mirage, then I'll fade away and you'll remain just what you were a few moments ago. Just what I was. But what if I'm not a daydream? What if I really can do what I say? Is a simple little soul so much to pay for what I offer, for what you really want to be? Hey, Martin. Boss gave me a message for you. Says I should wait till you're alone to deliver it. So here it is. Alone? Sure. Don't see anybody else here, do you? Anyway, boss says don't bother moving on with us to Keokuk. Says he's going to get a better act for the rest of the tour. What? But he said that I had till the end of the week to... Sorry, pal, but he saw your last show. Said he didn't figure you'd ever get any better. Yeah, but... <laughs> Where, where can I go? What can I do? Beats me. See you around. Well, Mr. Martin, what do you think of my proposition now? He couldn't see you. Maybe you are. Maybe you can do what you say. Of course. What was that? How did my signature get on that paper? Once you've convinced yourself, anything is possible. Come now. Leave those cabinets and cylinders and other trinkets. From this day, no illusion is too impossible for you to perform. The power of real magic is yours. The world is waiting for you. You are what you never were before. <laughs> specialist to tell you about air pollution. You are a professional expert with almost every breath you take, particularly if you live in the city. Your lung association would like your help in trying to clean up the air, starting with the use of mass transportation and cutting down on car use. For free information on how the ordinary citizen can do extraordinary things to clear the air, write to your lung association. They offer you this public service message because they care about every breath you take. sounded so worried on the phone, I had to. But why meet here in front of the theater? Why not in your dressing room? You must have a big one, judging from the size of Michael's show. Yes, it's all right. But I don't feel I belong there. I don't feel I belong with Michael at all anymore. Have you seen the show? Yes, I saw it last night. And you didn't come backstage to say hello? I wanted to, but I had an odd feeling that the Michael Martin inside this theater isn't the same one I knew. I've had the same feeling lately, Carl. That's why I called you. I've been losing touch with Michael. It's like I'm no longer his assistant or his friend. What do you mean? Well, he doesn't seem to need me anymore. I'm still in the act, but I'm more stage dressing than a real assistant. I don't handle anything anymore. He says I don't have to because everything works itself. He won't tell me how any of the new illusions operate. And the few I've been able to look at closely don't give a hint of how they work. Yes, I've been hearing how Michael has devised all new methods for his show. He's been fooling the other magicians pretty badly. Carl, please come inside and see Michael. 
Maybe you can tell what's come over him. I don't know, Millie. Please. I... For me. All right. Mmm, the palace. The pinnacle of show business. An awful lot of magicians would give anything to work here. I think one may have given too much. This way, Carl. Here's Martin's dressing room. A star on the door. Pretty good. Guess Michael isn't here, Millie. I don't understand it. He almost never leaves the dressing room between shows. Well, apparently he did this time. I guess I've wasted your time, Carl. It's never a waste of time to see an old friend. Oh, oh we didn't hear you come in, Michael. Well, in a way, I didn't. How are you, Carl? You haven't changed a bit. Well, you certainly have. Goatee, mustache. Your face looks thinner, too. Well, one must keep up one's image of the world's greatest magician. Now mustn't one. Indeed. You seem to have hit the right formula, all right. Well, not really a formula, Carl. I just decided that if I was going to make it big in the magic world, I had to produce my miracles in a way that no other magician could. <laughs> I succeeded in discovering a new method, and it's worked very well. Yes, it certainly has. But has it been worth the price? I don't think I understand. You changed, Michael. Millie knows. What's more, I can tell just from your manner at the performance last night. The Michael Martin I knew wasn't much of a magician, but he was a pleasant, friendly, humble person. Now you're a great show business phenomenon. But what has happened to the man behind the black cape? Is he the same person? So what makes you think I've changed? I'm not sure. But there's a different feeling about the new Michael Martin. Come now, Carl. Are you really interested in me? Or are you just jealous because I've been fooling a lot of people with illusions you didn't create? Michael! It's all right, Millie. That's another thing. I saw your show last night. You didn't like it? No, I didn't say that. It was very entertaining, very astounding. But it bothered me. Take the trick with the elephant, for instance. Ah, yes. One of my better illusions. I march the elephant on stage, pass a large hoop over her, and as the hoop descends, the elephant dematerializes into thin air. Michael, that trick is impossible. Impossible? Yes. I've been building magic illusions for 50 years. I've seen them all, know how they all work. There's no trick any magician can do that can fool me. So? So last night, you fooled me. <laughs> not with one trick, not with a couple of tricks. With every trick. <laughs> so I fooled you. What are you so upset about? Because if anyone can perform a trick that fools me, then it isn't trickery. It isn't an illusion. Oh? Well, what is it? It's magic. Real magic. <laughs> it's real magic or... <laughs> Or, or it's evil. Carl, I'm afraid you've reached a time in your life when things are happening you cannot understand. And when you can't understand them, you assume they're, well, evil. <laughs> I've simply developed a new way to do magic, Carl. A way that fools even you. But that's progress now, isn't it? Progress? I wonder. But I must go. It was nice seeing you again, Millie. Must you go? Yes, I can be of no use here. Carl, I regret if I've upset you. Upset me? No, not really. Concerned me, yes. Concerned? I'm concerned that even you may not know how deeply you've paid for your new power. <laughs> Goodbye, Michael. Michael, is it evil? What? Carl said that if your illusions aren't trickery, then they're evil. Are they? Millie, Carl distrusts what he doesn't understand. An attitude from the Dark Ages, unfortunately. Michael, you haven't answered my question. Millie, what's evil to one person is merely expedient to someone else. Now, why don't you go to your dressing room and get ready for this evening's performance, hmm? All right. She doesn't understand. But then how could she? Well, better get ready myself. My, you're getting to look more like me than I do. Oh. Oh, DeVille. I didn't hear you come in. Well, in a way I didn't. But you are becoming almost the image of me, Mr. Martin. Well, I uh, I decided that if I'm in league with the devil, I might as well look like him. I suppose. But that phrase, in league, I've never thought of. I'm sorry, Michael. I think I left you. Come in, my dear. Uh, Millie, uh, you, you remember Mr. DeVille, don't you? Yes, I think so. 
Yes, it's been almost three years, hasn't it? I guess so. Uh, look, we've got to get ready for the evening show. Uh, what is it you want? I'm afraid there isn't going to be an evening show, Mr. Martin, tonight or ever. What? Yes, your contract has come due, and I'm here to collect. Your soul is mine. Oh, no! It's only been a few years. Now, my career is just starting. I could go on for years. Yes, you could probably, but not now. In some future life, perhaps. If I choose. But I've got lots of new illusions that I haven't even tried yet. I thought of making someone in the audience disappear. Or even having the whole audience disappear. Spectacular feats, I'm sure, but I'm afraid they will never be seen. Your audiences can imagine them as something you might have done had you not so suddenly disappeared. What? Of course. What did you think? I was going to kill you or something much too violent. No, you shall simply disappear, leaving no trace. Oh, my God. Well, what about Millie? Now, she's heard. She'll know. Yes, that could present a problem. Of course, I could take her with us. No! Yet I think I shall just leave her. The story she would tell would be so fantastic that no one would believe it. In fact, that's been a saving grace during my entire career. No one ever believes the eyewitness accounts of my escapades. Yeah, but look, I... Look, Martin, you made a bargain with me. You got what you asked for. More, in fact. Now it's time to settle up. Your soul is mine, and I want it now. What if I said you couldn't have it? Others have tried that tactic, and it's never worked. They're all mine now. Well, I'm not going. Oh, <laughs> He's not going. My Hades, listen to that. <laughs> He's not going. Don't laugh at me. <laughs> Why? What are you going to do about it? <laughs> Michael, why are you looking like that? Real magic, Millie. I can do real magic. People have sold their souls to the devil before us. But no one has ever asked for the power I have. What are you doing, Martin? The ultimate trick to Bill. You gave me the power to do real magic. But do you know how much power that really is? I never knew. But now we're both going to find out. What are you doing? No! Stop! You can't do this! We'll see just what I can do to Bill. I'll keep you on time. You can't go on. Stop! 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 Mr. Osafine. Officer Lyons, what a pleasant surprise. Can you stay for tea? 
Thank you kindly, but I only stopped by to see that you were safe. Who would want to harm either of us? I don't know. But them gold watches in the front window. Well, they can attract the wrong element. Well, if we don't display them, how can we get customers? I may be stepping out of line, but ladies, the neighborhood isn't the same as it was. We don't have your kind of genteel society anymore. These days, it's full of junkies and thugs. We've never had a speck of trouble here, not in 52 years. <clears throat> Anyhow, please make sure all the doors and windows are secured. You don't want any unexpected guests. Next time, we meet two elderly sisters who run an antique shop in their home. Unfortunately, their once refined neighborhood has changed quite a bit. Poor dears. They're perfect targets for... Uh, but you'll find out. It's a chilling darkness drama by Ken Gerard called Catch Kill. Don't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> For my next trick was written and directed by Roger Rittner. Featured in the cast were Michael Rye, Joey DiArria, Wendy Allen, and Art Dutch. Also heard were Bill Irwin and Bob Farley. Sound patterns by David Surtees. Darkness is a Kinderard Roger Rittner radio production. Now, until next time, this is your host, Claude, wishing you good night. Forever. <laughs> <laughs>